that line, have you remember? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X2. Change in Y over change in X, sound familiar? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. The Y and the X represent two points. Okay, so I give you two points on a graph, find the slope of a line that goes through them. That's what I use here. I also like to use another one I'll use from time to time, depending on the situation. And that is rise over run. Yep, rise over run. So I like to use that from time to time. Uh, you'll notice right below this, I give you four lines that have different slopes. I'm not really worried about the positive and negative. I really want you to focus on these two right here. A slope of zero. I mean the number zero. Not mean that doesn't mean no slope. The slope has a slope. It's called it is zero. And that is what type of line here? Don't say straight. They're all straight up here. That is a horizontal line. Thank you. Right. Going left to right. Horizontal lines have a slope of the number zero versus this type of line, which is vertical, has undefined or no slope sometimes. No slope does not exist for a vertical line. All right. But just make sure you know the difference. Zero. The slope is zero for horizontal. No slope for undefined for a uh, vertical line. All right. Let's get into it. You guys have heard of these two ways to write the equation of a line, slope intercept, slope intercept, which I give you the slope M. I am still have no idea why they name it M, but whatever. And then the Y intercept, which is B. That's slope intercept, Y equals MX plus B. This is not on your notes, and I'd like you to add it in for me because we're probably going to use it more than slope intercept form. And that is point slope form, point slope form. You guys did use this last year, correct? Even if you tell me no, I don't care because I know you're lying. I asked your algebra one teachers already. Point slope form. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Might not be fresh in your memory, but it's there somewhere. I'll dig it out. The only thing we plug in for are X1 and Y1. Those are that, that's the point it goes, the line goes through. X1, Y1, we plug in for, and M, same as M over here, the slope. Well, Mr. Carlino, what about the other Y and X? We don't plug anything in, it stays Y and X. Just like over here, it stays Y and X. I just plug in for M and B. All right, so we're going to be using both forms. Uh, you'll probably prefer one over the other, I bet, by the end of class, but we, we'll, we'll use both forms. Any questions before we start graphing, writing equations of lines, getting after it? Let's go then. First thing, y equals 4x plus 2. Can you identify the slope and the y-intercept? First thing, oh, before we do that, what form is that in? Slope-intercept form. So the slope is right next to the x. The other value is called your y-intercept. What do you say we do this? What is the slope up here of that one? Slope. First one up today, we got eight spot there. Gage, what's the slope? Four. Four. How about the Y intercept? Two. Good. I don't do much graphing in this class. All right. I, much at all, but sometimes just to make sure we're good uh, to graph this line. And I'm not talking to put it in your numworks works and get a table. I don't have time for that business. We don't have time. Remember the first point you graph? is your y-intercept, which is 2, but I got two twos on the graph. I got a 2 right here on the x-axis, and I got a 2 right here on the y. Which one do I graph? Y. On the y. That's why it's called the y-intercept. So on the y-axis, I graph 2, but you need two points to graph a line, not one. So where do I find another point? You go over to your slope, and this is where I use this version, rise over run. So from 2... I go up one, two, three, four, and I go over one. Which way over one? To the right. If it was negative, I'd go to the left. One, two, three, four over one. That's all you need, but some of you may want to feel warm and comfy inside, right? That's a good feeling. Might want to do it again to get a third point. It's up to you. And I don't need you to bust out your straight edge. I'm not getting any out. Just graph it in for me. Boom. There it is. Oh, look at two. 
No, the slope is not negative six because is it is it in y intercept form? Mm -hmm. So you need to get it in y intercept form before you tell me what the slope is, remember. Okay, you cannot tell me it's negative six, it's not in y intercept form. So I need it in y intercept form, aka get the y by itself. First step to get the y by itself. Ooh, I'm nervous here. Nervous, nervous, nervous. Will, first step. Thank you. It's not divide by three. All right, we do the division at the end. Add 6x over. I get 3y. I like to write it in slope-intercept form, so that's why I'm going to keep the 6x first instead of the 12. Is it wrong if you do 12 plus 6x? No, but just make sure you know where the slope is. Not done yet. Not in slope-intercept form. One more step on each side. Theodore. Darn right we do. Not just divide by three, divide everything on the right side by three. Everything. Yep. And so now it'll be in slope intercept form. Y equals boom, one three, Jacob. Y equals two X plus four. What's the slope and Y intercept now of this line? Now that I have it in slope intercept form. One eight. Kevin, slope. Two. How about the Y intercept? Four, good. And now we can graph it real quick. Up four, start at four, and then go up two over one. Before I move on, what class are we in here? Yeah, oh, he asked that question. Nothing good comes out of that. I'm not, I'm not concerned or going to expect. My, my expectations are not to know this form, but it, does anybody know what this form is called? When the X and the Y were on the same side and the number, the constants on the other. Anybody remember that from last year? You had slope intercept form, you had point slope, and then you had this other form that I have up here. No, don't remember that? Began with an S. Standard. Standard form. Yep, called standard form. All right, just a little go back in the time machine. All right, all good. All right, let's uh, write some equations now. Let's write some equations. Now, the directions say write the equation in slope-intercept form, but I'm going to kind of change that. I want to do the form that's best for us, given the information. So based on what we're given, what form is the best? All right, so you look at number three. What's that mean again? So you know the slope. And what else did I give you? The y-intercept. Which one? Probably which one's the best one out of the two, slope-intercept or point-slope? Slope-intercept. Because I've given you the slope and the intercept. So everyone good? You should, I'm going to use y equals mx plus b here. Because all it is is substitution and I'm done. Plug it in and I'm done. All right, so plug in your three and your four, and what's the equation of this line here? Who are we going there? Catherine, hello. There you go. That's why this is the best method to use. There's the equation of that line. Good. All right, what about four? What would be the best option here? I'm given the slope and a point on the line. I'm given the slope and a point on the line. Hi, Tess. Point slope form, right? Because I'm given a point and the slope. All right, so let's remind ourselves. And then I have a challenge question for you after because we are in honors. But let's do point slope first. X1 and Y1 are the point on the line. M is your slope, so somebody's going to help me fill this in. Oh, there we go, Aylin, you're up. Uh, what's the Y coordinate of a point on this line? So what's going to happen when I plug in negative 4? Yep. Everyone all right with that? Why it's going to be positive 4? Because it will be y minus a negative 4. Equals, keep rolling here with me. What's the slope? Negative 1. Negative 1. And what's the x coordinate on the point? Two. Minus 2. And that's point slope right there. You leave it like that. That is point slope, if you remember. All right, I got a challenge now. What if I said, no, 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 no. I want it in slope intercept, though. I want it in slope, my final answer in slope <clears throat> intercept. Remember what slope intercept is, y equals, right? Clean this up. 
Solve it for y. Clean it up, and you're going to have slope-intercept form. So I take my point slope. What am I going to have to do with that negative 1 first? Distribute it. Yep. So distribute the negative 1. And almost in slope-intercept form, what has to happen last here? Subtract 4. And you'll have slope-intercept. So very easy, very easy to convert point slope into slope-intercept form. Very easy. There you go. All good? No issues? What's your deal, Sophie? You all right? Darn right you are. Other questions? All right. Oh, what about five? Where are we going to go with five? Five, zero, and seven, negative three. One. So now I'm given two points. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't get ahead of me. Can we, can we just agree as a class what method we're rolling with? Point slope or slope intercept? Okay, right here's here's, here's all right, all right, here's here's my my argument. You want to go slope intercept? I don't have the slope and I don't have the y intercept given to me. I don't have either. You want to go point slope? Okay, I don't have the slope, but I do have two points to choose from. So at least I have half of it done versus slope intercept, which I had none of it done. Agreed? All right, so I'm gonna go point slope here with you. And hey, remember, maybe the final answer has to be in slope-intercept form. You know how to convert it. You know how to go from slope point slope to slope-intercept. All right, uh, ooh, I don't have the slope. That's a problem. So there's no way I can plug into M. We know how to find slope, though. That's why I gave you the formula at the beginning. So let's find slope using our slope formula first. M equals, all right, what are my y coordinates you want to subtract? And then I got a little comment here. Y coordinates you want to subtract. Gage, back to you. Yep. Now, Gage chose negative 3 minus 0, which is correct. Now you have to subtract the x coordinates in the same order as you did with the y's. So whatever was paired with negative 3 has to come first. You can't just mix and match them. This is not distance formula. All right, you have to subtract your y's in the same order as your x's. So what x's am I going to subtract here? Gage, back to you. Finish. Uh, seven minus five. There you go. I don't care. Hey, we could have went neg we could have went zero minus negative three, but on the bottom, five minus seven should have been there. So negative three over two. All right, now let's finish our point slope form, and you have a big decision to make right now. Big decision, Violet, when we get to it. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Relax first. Which point are you picking? Because either one would, is going to work. Which point do you want to use, P or Q? All right. Let's go. Y minus? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Y minus? Zero. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on. I'm asking you to plug in the point slope form for me. We already know the slope, so now I'm going back to point slope, and I want to plug in the y, the x, and the m now. And you chose 5, 0. So y minus 0 equals our slope, which was what? Yep. x. There you go. And again, if the final answer, and I'm not going to waste time doing it, but if the final answer says slope intercept form, boom, distribute, clean it up. All right, everybody good. So that was algebra one last year, I hope. That was algebra one. Quick review of algebra one. Let me throw in the geometry part of it now, this parallel line business. How does parallel lines fit into this? Because I don't, if you did talk about it, let me know because I can go a little faster, but I don't think you did. All right. All right, let's do a line pair. Ooh, so I need to write the equation of a line that's parallel to that one, but goes through negative 2, 5. Thoughts on uh, the form, point slope or slope intercept? 
I already have something at least. Slope intercept? It's like already because it's parallel, so at the same slope. I thought people were going to say point slope because I already have a point. Slope intercept, I don't know what the y intercept is though. What do you mean it looks better? Point slope is like. No, 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 slope intercept is better. Like, I like. Yeah, I'm more comfortable, like, I'm more yeah, comfortable with it. Like, I, I know okay, all right. Hey, I'll do that, but my issue is going to be how are you going to find the y-intercept? Isn't the equation already like kind of in? You're going to divide by two because there's two y. <laughs> no, no. Right, there's, slope, there's slope intercept. All right, let, let's talk. This is a good discussion, honors kids. I'm not saying that anybody's right or wrong here. This is a good discussion. So I need the slope first. So you take this right here, 2y equals negative 1x plus 4. That's not in the form I need to find the slope because the slope's not negative 1, correct? Yeah. All right, so what do I need to do on both sides? Divide. All right, so I'll divide by 2. And I get y equals what now? Negative 1 half x plus 2. Okay, that's not my answer, though. That's not my answer. This doesn't go through negative 2, 5. I'm trying to come up. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm trying to come up with an, a line that is parallel to this one. And's got, and has to go through negative 2, 5. Like, this is not my answer. This is just this line. That's just that line. That's not my answer. Everyone see that? Yes? Okay. So you guys that want to do slope intercept, Let's first talk about what the slope of this new line is. And this is my point to the geometry part. It's got to be parallel. So if two lines are parallel, so you guys know that. What? You've been taught that, that it has the same slope. Yeah, because they're like the same. Okay. I, okay. I don't know if they do that in Algebra 1. I was told they don't. But like, that's just a common sense. Okay, if two lines are parallel. How do you know it has the same slope? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Joe. Steven, you got to know that. Okay, even if you don't, I'm telling you right. That's This is the new part I thought I had to teach you today. Is that, A, if two lines are parallel, the slopes are always equal. Okay, so what's the slope of this line? Negative one half. So what's going to be the slope of my parallel line? Negative one half because they're equal. Here's my problem with you guys using how are you going to find the, the y intercept? It's not two. It's not two. Sorry, it's not two. They don't have the same y intercept. Oh, I know. It's got to go through negative two five. So that was my problem. That's why I kind of question you guys saying use slope intercept, use slope intercept. All right, we know the slope's negative one half. My question is now how do you find where it crosses the y axis? Because it's not two, it's not five. Okay, Sophie? Can you just put the that's the way that's the way it's done yeah. is you take the point and your slope you plug everything in for y m and x and you solve for b i just thought maybe because i gave you the point you want to do point slope all right we'll do it this way what's the y coordinate it goes through five so i plug five in for y what's the m what's the slope of this line negative one half What's the x? Uh, negative, two. negative two. Now you solve for the b value. So we get five equals, what's that, one plus b? How do you move the one over? What are we doing here? What is going on? Yeah, what is going on here? Subtract one. Subtract one over, right? What's B equal to? Four. Four? Now, what's the equation of this parallel line? Y equals? Negative one half X plus four. Now, that's that's what I heard. Do slope intercept. Do it. That's what I heard. Okay. 
You know where I fell. I was going to do point slope because I gave you a point. So real quick, if you did go down that route, because I think it maybe would have been a little bit easier, but hey, if you guys want to do slope intercept, that's fine. It would have been Y. What's my Y coordinate? Minus 5 equals, what's our slope? Negative 1 half times X. What's the X coordinate of the point? Two. Negative 2, so it becomes... I just thought that would have been a little bit easier to calculate, but whatever floats your boat. Wait, you could have put that, and that would be your answer? I, yeah, unless I specifically say it's got to be in this form. All right, and remember, here's, here's also what I'm trying to get through to you guys today. If you like slope-intercept, point-slope transfers over to uh, slope-intercept very fast after you distribute and add the 5. Sophie? I just thought like for four, I was given the slope and the point already. Boom. I could automatically plug it in. When you were making it into oh slope intercept, yeah. Like, why did you do the distributive and not just solve the B? Like put in the X and the Y. You could have. I could have done it that way. Yeah, I could have. I just thought I just think Sophie, it was just easier for me to teach you guys that once you have point slope, it's very easy to get the slope intercept form. All right. Questions? Because I know we had a huge discussion there and I didn't want to lose people. It really comes up to what, whatever you guys want to do, whatever you feel comfortable with. It's probably going to be rare that I demand it in a certain form. The only, pro, the only time you might run into a pro, an issue is if it's a multiple choice question and everything's in slope intercept or if everything's in point slope. Okay, that's the only time you may run into you got to do it this way. But I can tell you on a non-multiple choice question, you do what you're comfortable with, all right? All right, what about seven here? Now I change parallel to? Perpendicular. Ooh, perpendicular. So these two lines do form a right angle, as you remember that. So now the slopes aren't equal to each other. You're just embarrassing yourselves right now. You're embarrassing yourselves. Embarrassing yourselves. Here we go. If two lines are, I want to use the symbol. What am I going to use for perpendicular? Thank you. Thank you. We haven't used it in a little bit. If two lines are perpendicular, the slopes are, and I'm going to use a term that I'm going to make sure I describe what it means. Negative reciprocals. Wow. Oh, wait, I remember. That is a mouthful. No, you don't. Negative reciprocals. <laughs> Ready. Oh, no, that was recession. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, my IQ is literally going down. Right it's not that high to be kidding with, but what I have here, it's going down. All right. So if I tell you the slope of a line is two-thirds, anything perpendicular to it, negative reciprocal means I flip it and change the sign. Reciprocal means flip, and the negative part means I change the sign. So anything perpendicular to it would be have a slope of negative three-halves. All right, so those two are perpendicular. Let's keep going here. One doesn't make you great. What if I had a slope of negative one-fourth? Something perpendicular to it would be a slope of four. They have to have opposite signs and be flipped. What about a slope of, let's go, six? Anything perpendicular to it? Negative one-sixth. Don't fall into this trap. Are they parallel? No. Because they're not equal, are they perpendicular? No. no, so it would be neither here. All right, they're neither parallel or perpendicular. Don't just, oh, they're flipped, good enough. Nope, they have to have opposite sides. All right, we good? So let's go back to this problem here. 
a line perpendicular to this one, and it's got to go through 8, 6. Can I do point slope or no? Are we, we're going to really stick to your guns and do slope intercept. Yes. I'm going all right, I'm going to do, I'm just going to mix it. I'm going to do point slope here. Because I do have a point that it goes through. All right, let's talk about the slope because that's the main piece here. I might have some studs in here. I might. And you already see that this is in what form? This is already in point slope form, so you can identify what the slope is right away just by looking at this. Some of you maybe not, and that's fine. That's fine. Maybe you can't see that that's point slope and where the slope would be located. So instead, what could I do to this to make it a little bit easier on my eyes to identify the slope? Distribute the 4. So I get y plus 3 equals 4x minus 8. And then do what? Subtract the 3 over. And now, hopefully, the rest of us that maybe couldn't see where the slope was up here now definitely can see what the slope is. And what is the slope here? 4, but I better not see that 4 in my answer. These aren't parallel. They're perpendicular. I should see another number in there. So here we go. Who's going to join me with this? Who Bennett, let's roll. So I'm going to do y. What's the y coordinate of a point it goes through? 6, y minus 6. Now I just talked. I do not want to use 4. These are not parallel. What do I want to use? The negative reciprocal of 4, which is? Negative 1 over 4. Thanks, Bennett. Negative 1 over 4. X, and then what is my? 8. You want slope intercept? Clean this up or solve for B like we did above. Plug in 8, 6 for Y, 8 for X, negative 1 fourth for your M, and solve for B. All right, two different ways you can get there. So everyone, go, that was my big thing today, parallel versus perpendicular slopes. We're good? Because we got one more quick thing to discuss, and that is horizontal and vertical lines, because I don't want you to do either form for those. Okay, if a line is horizontal or it's vertical, I do not want you to use point slope or slope intercept. I think it's way too confusing. So first thing I want, I provided a graph down below. Can you guys graph five, negative one for me? Five, negative one. And through that point, I'd like you to draw a horizontal, oh boy, this should be fun to watch. Horizontal line through it. Can I get a bunch of honor students to draw a horizontal line? Horizontal, horizontal. Side to side. Your next job for me, graph another point on that horizontal line. Any point, graph, graph another point, and right next to it, write its coordinates for me, please. All right, so this was 5, negative 1. Write its coordinates. I'm going to do negative 3, negative 1. It doesn't have to match mine. Just get any point and name it. And then do it a third time, please. All right, one more point on that line, please. Anywhere, anywhere. I want you to look at all three points. The original one we all have in year two that you just graphed. And I want you to tell me what's in common if I call on you. What is all the same about those three points? What is all in common about those three points? And don't tell me they're all on the horizontal line. <laughs> What's all in common? Oh, Sophie, there we go, going deep. So they're the same line. Which is what? Lines. Put those two together, say it one more time. Um, they both have the same y value to the negative one. She just came up with the equation of the line. That horizontal line right there, the equation is, what's the coordinate they have in common? Negative one. And it's the what coordinate? Y. The y coordinate is equal to negative one. There it is. That's the equation of that line. All the y coordinates equal negative one. Yeah, what is the slope of that line? We've got to go back and look at the beginning of our uh, notes today. Going back, any horizontal line, any horizontal line. Where am I going there? Violet, it's got a slope of the number zero. Yes, that's why I'm emphasizing this the number zero. Hey, that was fun. Let's do it one more time. What? So, how can it have? 
a number sold with zero, but still not because if you put zero, it gets sold. Zero times x would be zero. Yeah. And there's your y-intercept. So if you want, Zach, here's ready. No, this I, no, no, this okay. is a fancy version of this. No, I understand. But like you say, you keep like saying that. Yeah. The slope the is zero, but zero versus slope. no slope. That's two different things. A, oh, yeah. a line having a slope of zero and a line having no slope, two totally different things. Okay. That was fun. Let's do it again. Graph four, three for me. Four comma three and draw a vertical line through that bad boy. Vertical line. And same thing I had you do. Can you pick two points on that vertical line? Name them and see if you got anything in common. So if you look at those three points, what do they have in common? So I can get the equation here. What do they all have in common there? One more time. Let's go. Lucia, what do you have? And that's my equation. All the x's are equal to 4. What's the slope of this line? Vertical. No slope. Undefined. Or, I don't, you can say undefined or no slope. I accept either. All right, can we just sum this up? A couple rules if the line's vertical or horizontal, how I write the equation, because I don't want you to use point slope or slope intercept, as you saw. So let's start with the horizontal line. If you notice, it is a horizontal line. It'll always come in the form. What do we know about any horizontal line? All the what's match? The Y value. The Y value. So it'll always be Y equals, and depending on the problem, I don't know, but I'm just going to put a number. All right, so you'll put a y equals whatever the y value they have in common is. And then for any vertical line, what's all in common, what coordinates are always in common in the vertical lines? X Your x's, so it'll always be x equals, depending on the problem, a number. Okay? Questions there? Tomorrow it's all constructions. Okay, all constructions. Chromebook's out. You got 10 minutes. More than enough time. Can, hey, before you, before you, I let you loose, at the bottom where it's the homework's listed, look, it says don't have to graph. So you shouldn't have to graph anything for me tonight. I do not want you to graph. I want you focused on the algebra part. Okay, get your Chromebooks out because it's out of the textbook tonight.